escape from reality by intoxicating yourself? Is that an acceptable form of uh, living? When we say, is it right or wrong, you are asking the question in a moral way. I don't look at life as from the angle of morality. For me, the question is only does it work or doesn't it not work? Because once we have come here as life, every life, not just human life, every life is aspiring to become a full-fledged life, yes? A worm wants to be a full-fledged worm, an insect wants to be a full-fledged insect, a tree wants to be a full-fledged tree. And of course, a human being is aspiring to be a full-fledged human being. But we clearly know what is a full-fledged worm, what is a full-fledged insect, what is a full-fledged tree, but we do not know what is a full-fledged human being. Whatever you have become, still there is a longing within you to become something more, isn't it? So obviously you don't know what is a full-fledged human being. So when you do not even know what is a full-fledged human being, where is the time for you to put yourself to sleep? See, any kind of intoxicant means in some way you are putting down life. One who knows how to manage his own thoughts and emotions, if you knew how to keep your thought and emotion the way you want it, would you keep yourself blissful or tense or miserable or what? I'm asking, it's a question. If your thoughts and emotion took instructions from you, would you naturally keep yourself in the highest level of pleasantness and of e experience? You would, right? So if you were at the highest level of experience within you, would you want to put it down with alcohol or drug? No. So right now, our minds are in a state where it is causing enormous amount of stress and misery. You want relief at least at the end of the day. If you drink through the day, you will get labeled. So at least when you go home, <laughs> a month ago I was in New York City, the large group of people, I asked them, what do you think is the percentage of people in New York City who can sit in the evening peacefully, not even ecstatic, just peacefully, without even a glass of wine. I'm treating glass of wine as a minimum dosage. <laughs> they went into a debate and uh, they said uh, five percent. Five percent of the people can sit peacefully in the evening without even a glass of wine. I was in London among a very prominent group of people. I asked them what percentage of people in London can sit peacefully without even a, even a glass of wine. They said less than one percent. I'm saying the entire world is getting there. You know why? Simply because human intellect is active like never before. Never before in the history of humanity, this many people could think for themselves. Earlier your priest, your pandit, your scripture, your guru, somebody thought for you. You were not supposed to think. In many cultures if you thought, they took off your head. If you thought for yourself beyond the book that was there, they usually took off your head because you were a nuisance. Yes or no? But for the first time in the history of humanity, more people are thinking for themselves than ever before. Once people… you start thinking for yourself, unless something is logically correct, you cannot swallow it, isn't it? Something comes to you, unless it makes sense to you, you can't swallow it and digest it, isn't it? Even the worst kind of argument that is happening between people, you're watching the presidential debate and all this, worst kind of argument that's happening, for that person it makes sense. Yes or no? At home, husband and wife, there's an argument. Both of them think the other is absurd, but within themselves it's making sense to them what they're talking, isn't it? So unless it's logically correct, you cannot swallow it. So once this happens to you, 
what is happening in the world is, which has already happened to you and it's happening to younger generation in a bigger way is, the heavens will collapse. Not a small accident, heavens are collapsing. This generation of people, though it is collapsed, they're somehow trying to keep it up. But I'm telling you, your children will pull down the heaven if it doesn't come down. Because it's like this, what is there in heaven? Let's look at this. See, in Hindu heaven, food is very good. <laughs> There's also drink. So if you like food and drink, you must go to Hindu heaven. It's the best place to eat. Nala himself cooks for you. <laughs> in another heaven, there are white-gowned ladies floating in the clouds. If you like that kind of ambience, you must go there. If you go to another heaven, you will encounter virgin problems. No drink though there <laughs> So if you like that, you go there. But uh, how do you go there? What is the GPS to get to heaven? This happened in a Sunday school in Alabama. A Sunday school teacher was on full fire. The audience was not adults, tiny tots, but full on going. So, in the middle of this, in full this thing, he asked, what do you have to do to go to heaven? <sniffs> Little Mary stands up and says, if I scrub the church floor every Sunday, <coughs> I will go to heaven. He said, absolutely. Another little girl stands up and says, if I share fifty percent of my pocket money with my less privileged friend, I will go to heaven. Correct. Another little boy stands up and says, if I help people who are in need, I will go to heaven. Correct. Little Tommy in the back stood up and said, you got to die first. <laughs> That's the qualification, you know, you got to die first. When you die, depending upon what culture you belong to, we will either burn you, bury you, or throw you to the birds, one of these things we will do. What you call as my body is just a piece of this planet. It's best to put it back there when it's done. When you are done with this body, you must put it back into the earth, it's the most eco-friendly thing to do. So when you go to heaven, obviously you don't have a body. When you don't have a body, what will you do with good food and virgins? Nothing, you, it doesn't make any sense. So I'm saying, in the next twenty-five, thirty years, all heavens will collapse. Already it's collapsed in most people's minds. Probably the previous generation was actively thinking about going to heaven. You guys are like little, you know, you're not going anywhere. But you are little afraid to deny it. Next generation will deny it actively, yes or no? Your children will deny it for sure. So heavens will collapse. Heavens may collapse, but human longing to experience something more will not go. When this longing to experience something more becomes strong, the way we have managed this longing in human beings is, don't worry, you're miserable right now, but if you don't drink this evening, you, when you go to heaven, rivers flow with wine. Not in small cups, rivers are flowing. So this hope, once it collapses, which is already collapsing in the next twenty-five, thirty years, it'll vanish in the world. Once this happens, then people will move towards chemicals in a big way. Already the movement is huge across the world. So now, this is not a morality issue, this is just this. Look into my eyes and see, I'm always stoned, never touched a substance. But I'm all the time stoned, all of us sitting here in the same hall, we're breathing the same air, probably we eat the same food. But this moment how I'm within myself, I will not exchange this for anything in the universe. 
you give me the entire world, no deal. Because this is bigger than that. Because human experience is caused from within. If you take charge of it, you create the experience that you want. If you don't take charge of it, accidentally you become high. If the drink worked well, you become high, otherwise you become something else. Now, if you take charge of the basis of your experience, you will naturally cause the most pleasant experience for yourself. So, this is not about drink, this is not about drug, this is about have you taken charge of your life or are you an accident? If you're an accident, anxiety is natural, isn't it? If you're anxious, you want to somehow put down life at least in the evening. If it doesn't allow you, at least in the weekend you want to go down a little bit. If… see, the greatest thing that you have in your life, we are supposed to be the peak of evolution on this planet. Yes, compared to any other creature, we are supposed to be the peak of evolution. In this peak of evolution, one thing that's happened to us is, see physiologically we are not as robust as other creatures. Yes? The greatest thing that's happened to us is our intelligence blossomed. If our intelligence has blossomed, truly blossomed, then we should at least know how to make this absolutely beautiful and pleasant, isn't it? If intelligence has blossomed, it… if you want to create the world that you want, is it not important at least you are capable of creating yourself the way you want? Even what you want doesn't happen within you, how will it happen in your life? It is not about… For most people it is not about their life is not happening the way they want it. Even their mind is not happening the way they want, that's all their misery is. This happened. On a certain day, a lady went to sleep. A lady went to sleep. In her sleep she had a dream. In her dream she saw a hunk of a man standing there and staring at her. Then he started coming closer, closer, closer. He came so close she could even feel his breath. She trembled, not in fear. And then she asked, what will you do to me? The man said, well lady, it's your dream <laughs> What's happening in your mind is your bloody dream. Even your dream is not happening the way you want it, that's a problem. If your dream was happening the way you want it right now, would you want to drink? Oh my God, this can do so many things to you. You don't need any external help. If your dream could be just the way you want, could you sit here creating absolute bliss for yourself? Yes or no? Yes. So even your dream is not happening the way you want it, that's where it is. Even the dream machine is not taking instructions from you. So the only way is to kill it. No, no, kill it. With intoxication you're trying to kill it. In some way you're trying to kill it, isn't it? Put it to sleep. This is a… in terms of evolution it's a regressive step. When ninety percent of the population on the planet drinks and drugs, let us say. You will see this, unless we do something significant in the next… next fifteen to twenty years, if we do something significant, this can change. Otherwise, you will see in another sixty to seventy years, where ninety percent of the human population will be in some kind of a chemical. Seventy percent of the U.S. population is supposed to be on prescription medication. Thirty percent is buying it off the back streets, all right <laughs> The three major industries on the planet are, the top industries are arms and armaments stand first. Pharmaceuticals stand next, alcohol stands third. You are a beneficiary or a contributor? <laughs> alcohol, it's the third largest industry. So one… see, one takes you towards death, another pretends to get you back, 
another is hundred percent death. These are the three largest industries on the planet, bigger than food, can you beat it? The food industry on the planet at the end of uh, 2015 was 7.6 trillion dollars. The pharmaceutical industries is 7.2 trillion dollars. Now I think they've overtaken. That is, we're taking more medicine than food. Have we lost it or no? For sure we've lost it, isn't it? So probably in another five years, alcohol industry is bigger than food industry. This means we've definitely lost it, isn't it? So this is not about why should I not enjoy it? I'm saying if you want to truly enjoy this life, because you don't want to enjoy drink, I want you to understand, you want to enjoy your life, isn't it? If you want to enjoy this life, I will teach you a way where you can be super intoxicated, at the same time super alert. How's that for you? Amazing. Look at me. Yeah, amazing. I'm all the time drunk <laughs> but if you want, I can just go off like this any moment. I can, you've not seen me. I can go totally intoxicated any moment because all the time I'm on, all the time fully aware. This is what needs to happen to humanity, isn't it? And every human being is capable of this. They've just not paid attention in that direction, that's all. They're going for cheap solutions. <laughs>